So that greenhouse effect leaves a, a number of fingerprints. And these fingerprints are the proof that carbon dioxide is causing global warming and a variety of other changes in our, our system. So we've got an increase in humidity. Let's see if I have a laser pointer. In, uh, sea level rise is increasing. Ice sheets are decreasing, sea ice is decreasing, ocean heat content is increasing. Every single physical factor that should be responding to increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is in the direction that is predicted by basic uh, physical theory. We also have a lot of biological responses. So um, tree lines are shifting upward in elevation and poleward. Spring's coming earlier. Species are migrating. So biologists like to say, we don't even need the temperature data or the melting glaciers or the ice. We can see it in the biology. Great indicator. So there's no question that this is happening. Now, this is an incredibly warm year. Global warming, although it's global, it's very patchy. So some parts of the Earth, in fact, are cooling. Some parts are warming much faster than others. So the Arctic is warming generally far more quickly than the rest of the Earth. But this year, almost everywhere is seeing record high temperatures. So these are record warm areas, much warmer than average. And these are the only cool areas. And you can see there's a whole lot of red. And this is data through August of this year. And that's going to lead to an incredibly warm year, far warmer than anything else um, humans have experienced um, in history. So this is 2015. Again, the data go through the summertime. Um, the, the last really warm years, 2010, 2014, are obviously far cooler. And the last big El Nino year is 1998. And I'm going to talk a lot about El Nino because the reason we're seeing such a big jump this year is due to uh, the, uh, the onset of a, a major El Nino, which we've been predicting for about two years, and it's just really taken off. So what is El Nino? It's a natural phenomena. It's a natural cycle. It takes place in the Pacific Ocean. So under normal conditions, winds blow generally offshore. So this is meant to be kind of a, a 3D diagram of the Pacific. This is South America, Central America, North America. So we're right there. Um, normally, winds blow offshore, and they move water on the surface to the west. And the movement of that water draws up deeper ocean water, and that's what this is, the deep thermocline. It's really cold water, one or two degrees Celsius, and it comes up along the coast. That's why the water is so cold along um, northern Central America, even though you're still in the tropics. It's also incredibly nutrient-rich water, um, and that's why you get this incredibly productive fishery off of Peru in particular. Um, so these are normal conditions. Under El Nino conditions, those winds relax, and this big warm tongue of water kind of sloshes back to the east across the equator um, onto the shore of Peru. Peruvian fishermen are usually the first people that know that an El Nino is coming because the water turns clear and calm, and the fish totally disappear, and you really quickly start seeing signs in the marine mammals on shore. They get skinny because they're hungry. Seabirds disappear. So really striking ecological changes before oceanography even kind of pick this up with satellites and other monitoring devices. So this is an El Nino condition. Pacific water gets much warmer, um, and that change is what really drives the peaks we've been seeing over the last 30 or 40 years. So we've got this increased warming trend that's, again, caused by greenhouse gases. That's global warming. This variability is caused largely by natural intrinsic factors in the system. And the El Nino cycle is a big part of that. So these red years, the, the especially warm years, are all the El Nino years. Blue years are what we call La Nina, La Nina years, so the little girl. And those are the opposite. So the winds blow especially hard out of the east across Central America and create supercharged upwelling, and the Pacific cools off. Now, the phenomena 
confuses a lot of people, and it's used by a lot of folks that work for the oil industry and other organizations that just want to essentially spread confusion about global warming. And they use the variability to essentially try to trick the public into thinking that there's either been a pause in global warming or that the Earth is cooling. And what they'll do is they'll say, oh my goodness, in 1998 it was this warm, and then in 2006 it was this warm. Clearly there's global cooling. Or, or they'll all argue simply that there's been a pause. There's been no pause. There's just natural variability. And global warming is a 30 to 50 year phenomenon. You need 30 years of data to even begin to assess whether it's happening. And you can obviously see there's a really strong trend. 